Believe it or not, the title is not clickbait. We really did develop these images in sanguine fluid. And look how cursed they are. I love them. I'm going to develop all of my film this way from now on. And it was a lot cheaper than standard development, too. Now, you're probably wondering how this is possible and why we decided to try it in the first place. It all started with a message from one of my film bros in the group chat. Darren of Learn Film Photography informed me that there was a book called The Film Developing Cookbook, which posits that it should be possible to develop film in pretty much anything, at least anything organic. And Darren was interested to put this assertion to the test. Together, he and Dimitri of Analog Cafe had put together a set of developers <laughs> to test out, including seawater, moss, cedarwood, and pea. And he asked me if there was any cooking ingredients or plants that I would like to test out so that I could get in on the experiment. Now, being somewhat of an edgelord myself, I figured that if we're testing pee, why not test out the other classic bodily fluid? Blood. You see, sweat and pee are essentially the same thing. And seawater and tears, same thing. So, if we were to test out blood, then we could say that blood, sweat, and tears went into this video. Literally. And I thought that was a good bit. So here we are. Now you might be thinking, Yvonne, where did you get the blood? <laughs> Good question. At first, I thought it would be fun to use my own blood. So I called a few medical facilities and asked them if they would be okay extracting a pint of blood from my arm and letting me walk out the door with it. The answer was no. And then I asked them if my friend Mackenzie might help grease their wheels a bit. And that was also a no. <laughs> so, not to be discouraged, I got to work calling butcher shops. Asking for blood feels extremely suspicious. Especially since one of the numbers I called was actually a wrong number. And so it went something like, Hi, you've reached such and such office. Hi, do you sell blood? I wound up calling like 60% of the butcher shops in Vancouver before I finally got a lead. See, apparently, the meat arrives to a butcher shop already cut up. But the animal's already butchered. All the butcher does is cut it into smaller, more consumer-friendly pieces. They don't have blood. Silly me, thinking that they were actually doing the butchering at the butcher shop. No, apparently the butchering is done at the slaughterhouse, and they just send the animal already fully exsanguinated. There was one lady who said that they had some hemoglobin, which is like the weird fluid that collects in the bottom of the meat bag, and when I asked if I could buy it off her, she said no. You would think, with that much meat, blood would be pretty easy to find, but no. <laughs> one shop I called did sell blood, but only sold it in five gallon pails. But I have no feasible way of disposing of that much blood without looking like a serial killer. Even just flushing it down my drain seems like a bad call. So that was out. Finally, I got a lead. Apparently, there is a supermarket very nearby that sells both pig and cow blood in 500 milliliter pails for $5. Perfect! I wanted pig since it is genetically similar to humans, and I thought it would be edgy. And I successfully purchased it. It looked super sketchy. And the girl behind the counter was looking at me like I was doing something out of pocket. Like, girl, you sell it! Don't ask me why I need it, it's for an experiment! I was feeling so cool and accomplished having finally tracked down a place to buy blood until it started leaking all over my car floor and I realized that this was blood <laughs> and I was gonna have to touch it and develop film in it and film a whole video involving it and move. Good thing I am a true edgelord and I'm only moderately disgusted by an entire bowl of blood. And I hid my revulsion with confidence as I marched up to Dimitri's house that night to conduct our experiment. Dimitri and Darren had come by my studio earlier in the week to take photos for their much more exacting version of the same experiment. Dimitri had spooled over 200 frames of Ilford HP5 on 24 different rolls, 12 frames per roll. We got a model, the lovely Lily, to pose with the exact same lighting and posture, while Darren took the same shot on each frame at different exposure settings. Each roll had one frame that was two stops underexposed, one stop underexposed, properly exposed, and then one stop overexposed and two stops overexposed. Then, Dimitri would take a similar set of exposures on the same roll of this still life scene as well. Snap, 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 and repeat 24 times for 24 rolls. This was done in order to get the absolute best control to compare the exact same image across multiple unorthodox developing agents to definitively say which developers were the most effective. Now, I respect this scientific endeavor and I enjoy being a part of the process and playing a supporting role in the development of darkroom science. But I was more interested in making the most cursed images possible. <laughs> so instead of taking advantage of the scientific opportunity, I shot nearly the entire 36 exposure roll of Ilford HP5 at Dimitri's place using a single bulb. I had this very well planned out and coherent page of inspo ideas, and Darren and Dimitri were very patient with me as I executed each of them. They each posed for a few, even ones that looked a bit silly, and also helped take a few of me. 
which did look very silly at the time. At first, I was planning to shoot this role around town, you know, bring it to photo shoots with me and maybe take a snap here and a snap there of different people who I photographed throughout the week. But it occurred to me that it might be inconsiderate to do this on the off chance that the vengeful spirit of a pig <laughs> might decide to haunt the subjects captured on this particular roll of film. Soaking something in pig's blood does seem like a very good way to curse that object. <laughs> and while I personally don't believe in curses, somebody else might, and I just wanted to make sure that all of the subjects consented fully to the experiment. Between the three of us, we had three development tanks, none of which belonged to me, because this was actually my first time developing film. <laughs> and what a fun way to learn. Ow. <laughs> And what a fun way to learn. I cannot understate this. A huge thank you to Dimitri and Darren for walking me through this process. I was actually very clueless about how this was done. Film development has always been something that I was afraid of. But now that I've done it with the guidance of two trained professionals, I feel like a real film photography educator and not the imposter I've been for the last two years here on YouTube. Honestly, it's not that complicated and I don't know why I haven't been doing it myself for years. Okay. So let's talk chemistry for a second while we prepare this experiment. Why does this work? Why can we develop film in blood and other organic substances? I'm not a scientist, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it. So you have silver halides, right? They are these tiny crystals comprised of silver bonded with one of the halogens. Film is coated in silver halides. When you take a photo, you expose the array of silver halides to light, to photons. This is basically the first domino set up to trigger a chain reaction. That domino is called a sensitivity speck, which is a tiny speck of metallic silver that is a seed to grow more metallic silver around it. Okay? Okay. Now, this is not enough to form an image. This is called a latent image, but the first domino still needs to be pushed over. So we add developer. Developers donate electrons and silver halides that have been exposed to light and developed sensitivity specks are primed to accept those electrons much more quickly than those that have not. Pig's blood, as well as other organic substances, contain organic compounds called phenols. These chemicals often contain one or two electron-rich groups of atoms, which donate their electrons to the silver ions in silver halides in order to form silver atoms. Mm. It took me a lot of reading comprehension <laughs> to write that out, but now that I have, I actually do feel like I get it a bit. Truthfully, we used a few other components in our developer as well, aside from the blood. We mixed 250 milliliters of pig's blood with 250 milliliters of water, 15 grams of washing soda, and three grams of vitamin C powder. The vitamin C powder is probably cheating a bit. It's a second developing agent that helped speed up the development time, as blood alone would have taken quite a while. But before you go saying, well, then it wasn't the blood, it was the vitamin C powder that developed the image, we developed a control group with just the vitamin C and washing soda, and honestly, only the most overexposed shots came out and they came out extremely dark. So the pig's blood was a necessary component. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the washing powder is useful because it is alkaline. Vitamin C is very acidic and developing agents require an alkaline solution to activate them. So sodium carbonate, AKA washing soda, was useful in raising the pH level. A fun fact is that pig's blood is also slightly alkaline, as is human blood. One day you're a photographer, the next day you're Googling the pH of pig's blood. Life is a journey. Anyway, that's the chemistry of it. We soaked the film rolls in each developing compound agent for 10 minutes. And so 10 minutes after pouring it in, I started to rinse it. And we kept rinsing it. And we kept rinsing it. Oh my God, <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> It was an unending process of rinsing and flushing and rinsing and flushing and the water just never came clean. It just gallons and gallons of blood pouring out of this tiny development tank for like 25 minutes, I swear. I was standing at the sink just <laughs> trying to get it clean. There was clots, there was tissue. It was very disturbing. I was having a Lady Macbeth moment. I finally came to understand the metaphor of a guilty conscience as this blood just continued to gush out. But eventually, Dimitri did declare it clean enough to go in the fixer. And so we filled it with fixer, fixed it, popped it out, and it worked. Isn't that exciting? Look, it worked. Oh my God, oh my God. After all of the bloody endeavors that I went through, 
to do this experiment, I was pretty thrilled that it actually worked. A bunch of the other developers worked too. Cedar worked particularly well, and so did Coffee. If you're interested to learn more about what worked and what didn't, and everything that we tried, pop over to Dimitri's Analog Cafe to read his write-up on the experiment, or check out the video on Learn Film Photography, which is Darren's channel here on YouTube, where he gives in-depth breakdowns on different film-related topics. I love making videos with these guys because we all approach film and content creation from slightly different angles, and this kind of speaks to the beauty of the art form as well, doesn't it? Anyway, that's the video. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're inspired to try developing film at home and you need some equipment for it, you can pick up a starter kit from Freestyle Photo LA by clicking the link in the description. It's an affiliate link, and so I get a portion of all of the sales that are made through that link. It really does help support the channel. Uh, another way to help support the channel and fund similar experiments like this is by clicking the other link in the description below and buying me a coffee. This is a one-time $5 donation, and all proceeds from this link go directly towards making new content for the channel. So thank you to anyone who considers clicking on either of those links. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week with a new video, and hopefully it will be the video essay that I've been promising, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Sorry about that. In the meantime, though, I want you guys to stay sharp, and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye, guys.